Well, I do, Larry. I think the economy at some point in time will improve despite the fiscal programs we've enacted. But I think the issue is, you know, look at GE. You know, we were talking about it last week. It was around 10 or 11, then 9. Uh, you know, it's not a bad buy there, but now it's at 6. What's to say it's not going to go to 1 or 2 tomorrow? Why, why do I need to buy right now when I don't have confidence in yeah. the structure that they're going to be operating and, in next week yeah. or next month? And, you and, know, and, and uh, go you ahead. Know the, who's talking? Yeah, Peter, you know, the problem with the companies like General Electric and General Motors, for years, these companies weren't earning their money in manufacturing. They earned it in finance. I mean, General Motors always lost money selling cars. It made money financing cars. And General Electric, the same thing. They kept getting more and more of their earnings from finance. And now that's coming back to bite them. And they have tremendous losses in their finance divisions. And I think the, on their balance sheet, the unknown liabilities related to all this debt financing probably dwarfs the value of their productive assets. Well, let me go to yeah, Michael Peter Farr. brings up a good point, Larry. Um, you know, the, uh, one of the things you have to do as an investor in this environment is to separate out earnings quality and underlying businesses from the asset valuation FAS 157 this type is issues a hard on the balance thing to sheets. Do. This is becoming a very hard thing to do because everything seems to be going down in almost tsunami waves. I mean, look, I got to give you one. Uh, let me go to Michael Farr. I've been trying to get to you for 20 minutes. Hello, Michael. How are you, buddy? Hello, Larry. Look How at, are you, pal? Uh, you know, we are spending literally trillions of dollars to bail out banks, get rid of the toxic assets, now consumer asset related bonds through TALF with the mortgage uh, bailout. You know what? Take a look at the numbers today, Michael. Consumer finance companies that should benefit from TALF, which is meaning the Fed is going to essentially finance the purchases of consumer related asset backed bonds. 12% down. Sally May, which the uh, Obama administration is crucifying Sally May by taking away their private lending. Uh, that's down 15%. But a good bank, a good trust operation, Capital One down 14. American Express down 12. Discover down 11. Those are credit card issuers that should benefit from TALP. They're getting killed. Then you look at the banks. All this talk. This guy Geithner, who no one will work for, we're going to cover that in a minute. <laughs> Literally, his deputy nominee and his undersecretary nominee are walking away. I have no idea whether it has to do with taxes or not. But look at Wells Fargo down 19 percent, J.P. Morgan down 19 percent, Bank of America down 12 percent, and Citigroup down 10 percent. It's a buck stock. In other words, nothing is working, Michael Farr, despite an upward sloping normal right-sized yield curve, which is normally a <laughs> signal of economic recovery and is normally healthy for banks and financial institutions. They are getting killed on a daily Daily basis with almost no exceptions. What is it? The Dow is off 14 of the last 18 trading sessions, Michael Farr. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> you know, every, well, everything's going to hell, Larry. I mean, we, it basically is what's going on, or at least that's the overall presumption. This is America. Well, this country Larry, never you know, goes but, to hell. You know, never. We, this is America. The, the markets are figuring out here that the banking system's going to be worth zero, or that's the message well, that you know, they're sending. This might be America, Larry, but the Americans are broke. The Americans who have been borrowing all this money I, I, can't pay it back. That that's the problem. Over true. clarity, I'm the just government's still, just, just muddying things up, and it's not helping. Go ahead, Zach, real quick. It is just not true that Americans are broke as a general sure statement. The banks have absolutely cratered no. systemic problems. Most American Americans citizen. are paying down their credit card debt. Ninety some odd percent of them are employed and they're saving five percent a month. I mean, that's a ludicrous you statement. See, I think that we are they're, they're starting to, to save some, because they're broke. I think to some extent. Look. The government is making bad decisions, gentlemen, all right? That's my editorial, as you know. But I also think in the last couple of years, bankers have made very bad decisions. Brokers have made very bad decisions. Mortgage lenders have made very bad decisions. Some CEOs have made bad decisions. Because of the and Fed, consumers Larry. consumers have made bad decisions. Because yes, of we bad monetary policy. Of, but I have That's no why. doubt, if left to its own devices, we are still productive and resilient and durable. There's a spirit of entrepreneurship, which not even the Obama people can stop. We will get out of this. I just believe, I have come around to believe that the government has seriously become the problem now. I mean, everything <laughs> they touch turns to stone. They've always been the problem, Larry. Michael, uh, Peter Schiff, uh, where are you going here? Give me your investment real quick. Get, one, one. Get, get, get out of the U.S. before they do any more damage. All right. Michael, uh, and before the dollar turns. Michael Cagino, where are you going right here when the market opens tomorrow?
Uh, well, U.S. stocks long term, and I still like gold because of the inflationary pressure we're going to see someday. All right. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Our investment panel is going to continue. Zachary Carabell, Michael Farr, they got more work to do. We're going to be joined by fresh new recruits to talk about this dreary story. Coming right ahead of us, we're going to open up the Asian markets. Then, by the way, why can't Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner get anybody to work for him? We're going to have the full story when the Cudlow Report returns, plus some disenchanted senators, plus Sheila Bear scaring the bejesus out of American savers. Oh, my God. What next? If I had any hair, I'd be pulling it out.